trying to stay away from the big Metallica question, but I did want to ask you, you know, 30 years of the Black Album, A, that sounds crazy to say, but, and it's crazy that that album is still kind of on the charts. You know, what, what are your memories of that album coming out and, uh, you know, obviously being huge for the metal scene? I still remember the first time, okay, like, everybody remembers where they were when the the World Trade Center got, got hit with a plane, you know, <laughs> right? like significant events like that in your life. You, you remember exactly where you're at. Um, the Black Album was like that for me. The first time I heard Inner Sandman, I remember, I remember the intersection I was at in my car. And I remember when it came on and I was just like, man, this is going to be huge, you know, and it just... It, I think it was like one of the first days they started playing it on the radio. And I was like, oh, my God, this is. And then I, I listened to the record after that. And the same thing. I was like, wow, this is, is going to be bigger than life. And it was, you know, they sold a couple records and they did toured with a couple of shows after that. I think yeah, like yeah. three years of touring or something. Yeah, three or four years straight, five singles. It was a nut, it was a nuts album, man. And I was I've been bringing it up on this because, uh, you know, when that album came out, I was 12 and it just completely changed my entire world, you know, and uh, made me much more of a metalhead than I ever probably would have been. So, uh, so yeah, just celebrating that album and obviously your connection with Jason, you know, when you see that album blowing up, are, are you like bummed that it's not happening to you? Are you excited that it's happening for your friend? A lot of mixed emotions there. Yeah. You know what? Jason's a good friend of mine. Uh, I've always had a, a, a connection, a chemistry with him as far as music and stuff like that. And when he, I know when he left our band, he would have never left anybody, anybody except for Metallica. That's the only band he would have left us for. And when he got the job, you know, it's like, dude, you, you have to take this, man, and good luck with it because this is a career, super career opportunity for you. And uh, no, I don't really get bummed about it. I'm really proud of what he's done. There's huge accomplishments. He's uh, he's made his mark in the in the business. He's in the Hall of Fame. Like it, it's pretty incredible. Yeah. It's definitely crazy to see some of your friends go on and, and do huge things like that. Uh, you joined the Flotsam and Jetsam at 17. Was there any issues with you being that young? And uh, you know, were they worried about getting a 17-year-old a in the band, maybe not being able to play some of the clubs or anything? This is uh, where, where Newstead came in on it. He would, Whenever we would do cl uh, club shows, he would have to go in and bargain with, with uh, the promoters <laughs> and the owners. Like, yeah, he's 17, but, you know, he won't, he won't be around the bar. And... Of course, now you can't do that. But back then, they were a little more flexible on what they right. could do. You know, the the violations and stuff. I, they wouldn't have gotten in trouble, and I just would have gotten kicked out. You know, now there's all kinds of fines and stuff that would happen. Your bar would get closed down. But yeah, that's that's kind of one of the things. Uh, and just be a naive kid, you know, just right out of high school, and uh, I don't know. It was a pretty great experience. Metal was brand new. You know, it was something that was coming up in uh, in the music business. And uh, it was just nice to be a part of that, you know, that growth and everything. 